Here are passive range of motion exercises to complete post-rotator cuff surgery. Welcome to Age Fit with Tess. My name is Tess, physiotherapist. By the end of this video, you are going to know how to complete passive range of motion exercises post-rotator cuff surgery. Passive range of motion exercises are typically completed within the first phase of rehabilitation post-surgery. When to complete these exercises will be determined by your physiotherapist and surgeon. Make sure to join the Age Fit with Test Facebook group to get further support with staying fit and active. To work with me one-on-one -on -one via consult or the Fit with Arthritis program, head to www.agefitwithtest.com. Let's get started. The first three exercises are completed lying supine. Starting with abduction, using your unaffected arm, push your post-surgery arm away from your body using a solid stick or broom handle. Here, my right arm is doing all the work while my left shoulder is relaxed. The purpose of supine passive exercises is to promote shoulder joint movement while avoiding placing strain on the repaired tendons. As muscle contraction of our shoulder and upper arm muscles places strain on the corresponding tendons, we are aiming to avoid any muscle contraction or tensing throughout these passive range of motion exercises. Range of motion should be pain-free, however may feel tight toward the end of range due to being immobilized in the sling. Again, these passive range of motion exercises using a stick are typically a progression of the pendulum exercises as seen in the video linked in the cards. The second exercise is flexion. Again, allow your unaffected arm to do the work while your post-surgery arm is relaxed. Using the stick, bring your arm up above your head to around 90 degrees shoulder flexion. Here we are aiming for slow controlled movements as opposed to moving quickly through the exercises. This is because we are concentrating on allowing the non-affected arm to do all the work which is against typical movement patterns of everyday life and requires an increased level of focus. Typically, you would be completing these exercises a few times per day, starting off with lower sets and reps, such as one set of eight reps, and moving toward increased sets and reps over a period of a few weeks, depending on the extent of the repair, tendons involved, and overall range of motion. Again, using your non-affected arm to lift your post-surgery arm up, pause, and lower down. Repeating one last time, lifting your arm up with the stick, pause, and lower back down with the stick. The third exercise is external rotation. With your arm by your side, roughly 30 degrees away from your body and your elbow bent to 90 degrees, use your unaffected arm to slowly guide your post-surgery arm to externally rotate. From this view, we can see the position of the arm compared to our body, as well as see the movement into external rotation. Use a folded towel under your elbow to allow your elbow and shoulder to be at the same height. Again, your post-surgery arm should be relaxed while your unaffected arm is creating the movement. Again, you will likely feel some stiffness toward your end of range due to being immobilized in the sling. One last time, move your arm into external rotation with the stick and come back to the starting position. The second variation of this routine is in sitting. This is typically a progression after completing the exercises in supine as it allows greater range of motion into abduction and flexion. Starting with abduction, use your unaffected arm to push your post-surgery arm up toward the sky. Again, here my right arm is doing the work while my left shoulder is relaxed. The range of motion you achieve during seated abduction will typically be determined by your pre-surgery range of motion, the extent of the tendon repair and how much range of motion you have regained post-surgery in abduction, flexion and external rotation so far. 
Again, we are aiming for controlled movement created by the unaffected arm with the post-surgery shoulder and arm muscles relaxed. Repeating one last time using the stick to lift your arm up toward the sky and lower down again using the stick to control the movement. Moving on to seated flexion. Use the stick to bring your post-surgery arm up above your head. Here we are moving toward full shoulder flexion as opposed to 90 degrees, which we were doing in supine lying. Again, the range of motion you are able to complete will typically depend on the factors mentioned earlier. Typically, the aim of seated variations is to return to your pre-surgery range of motion prior to progressing to active range of motion. Again, the movement should cause minimal pain and you may feel tightness toward end of range. If you are not at this stage yet, make sure to watch the video linked in the cards, Pendulum Exercises for Shoulders. Repeating two more times, lift your post-surgery arm with the stick and lower back down. And final time, lifting up, pause and lower down. Now for seated external rotation. With your arm by your side and elbow bent to 90 degrees, use your unaffected arm to slowly guide your post-surgery arm out away from your body. Again, keeping your shoulder relaxed. If your repair included your biceps tendon, you may not be able to complete this variation yet as it does involve some active biceps contraction to hold your elbow in flexion. Remember to join the Age Fit with Tess Facebook group to get further support with staying fit and active. To work with me one-on-one -on -one via consult or the Fit with Arthritis program, head to www.agefitwithtess.com. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell for the next video where I'm going to show you additional phase one post-rotator cuff surgery exercises. To continue to stay fit and active in the meantime, watch these two videos right here. See you next time.